Hey guys, still here and welcome back to Wargame Red Dragon. In today's video, we're looking at another one of the tournament matches. Now, the tournament has a main bracket, but it also has a, what it's called, loser's bracket. If you're kicked out of the main tournament, then you're still inside of the loser's bracket. If you lose there, you're out of the tournament. But if you win enough matches in the loser's bracket, you have a chance to come back into the main tournament. And that is what these teams are still hoping to achieve. The one that we're looking at now is Regiment Husinger versus Green Brigade. Green Brigade is Red 4, Grem, Bearded Wrath, and Lisbon versus uh, Regiment Husinger's Jude, Scheiskopf, and Storm Commando. The map is once again Highway to Soul. I was hoping for a bit more diversity among the map choices by the teams, as Blue 4 can pick the map, but once again they went with Highway to Soul. Now, in case you're unfamiliar with the rules of the tournament, they are as follows. You play a 3 versus 3, or smaller if you cannot get your entire team together. You play four conquest points, a total of uh, 500, to be achieved in 30 minutes. Now, the big twist is that there is no income. You get 3,000 starting points for the entirety of your team, and you'll just have to spend those wisely. If you do not, then the enemy will make sure that you regret the choices that you have made. Since there is no income, the teams are going to have to really nurture your, their units, and the units that they do have to nurture cannot come in the form of coalitions, and they also cannot come in the form of the US or the USSR. This is to shake things up a little bit more, and to add to that, they can only use one particular nation per player. So let's say that Scheiskopf over here is uh, France. That means that the other two cannot play that nation. So we're forcing diversity in this tournament. We're forcing these guys to play different decks, different modes, different maps, and different ways that they can normally, or that they might not normally play. Now these guys probably are communicating on Discord because I'm seeing very, very few uh, notifications over here, except <laughs> apparently for me. Uh, high stealth, I've returned, says Storm Commando. And these guys are communicating between each other about how many points they have left. Storm Commando has 80, Yuda has 110, and Shyskov is holding 700 points in reserve. That is a lot of points. I wonder what he's going to spend that on. Now keep in mind that players effectively have 900 points to spend if they go for a base CV which is worth 100 points. With that in mind, you only have effectively 900 points that you can spend and that's without calculating that you might need a fob. Now it looks like Storm Commando, who, uh, sorry, Shyskov, who's there, there is in the hole currently. Um, he's deployed a few units, Flying Command Unit, Panther, Celtic, Cannon. That's it. Now I wonder what their plan is, because they might be rushing towards Bravo and maybe spend some points once they get to Bravo so they can get their units towards Echo faster or at least without fuel constraints. On Red 4 I'm not really seeing any communication going on, but again, these guys probably communicate through Discord, TeamSpeak, or any other method of their choosing. What we can, of course, see is the triple threat, the three M84ANs. Pretty much every tournament match you see these vehicles appear, and pretty much every tournament match they do very, very well. We have Bearded Wrath going off with a Sokol and an MI2T, Looks like they're flying towards Gulf. Grem has an L12 out on patrol. You can usually see on these tournament matches that they don't go for very high spending on aircraft. It's usually one of these things. Sort of a scout slash helicopter spotter. Um, and the L12, only 50 points, is being countered by the F8 Crusader, which is only 60 points. So they're, they're cheap aircraft on both sides, but they do the job. They keep an eye on the skies, making sure that no sneaky helicopters move around the flanks. Now the Sokol is moving into a position to potentially shoot down enemy helicopters if it can spot them. And in the meanwhile, the French are operating with their helicopters on the other side. Now Scheidskopf is using the French, got Storm Commando using the Israeli, and I'm seeing the Swedes. You don't really see the Swedes that often in this tournament. Or at least I haven't seen them that much, but then again, I haven't watched all the tournament matches. The mi 8 KT is trying to shoot down the cannon, but immediately gets wiped out by the Celtic. There is, however, another threat that the Celtic might not be able to intercept, and that's the L-12. Killing off the reconnaissance helicopter. 
Now, Blue 4 has landed an HGM2 team. Uh, it looks like there might also be Maglan coming in. We've got Maglan's landing here and here. And, of course, the Command Infantry from Shyskov has taken up position in Bravo. They were slightly faster on the draw than Red 4, but Red 4 is about to move into Golf and Foxtrot, which will immediately get them the points that they... Well, actually, are they going to be fast enough? Because there is possibly a command unit here. Or did it get wiped out? Hold on. Hold on, where's the command unit? There are some good lords, some serious wrecks over here. This could have contained the command infantry. If that's true, then Blue 4 is at a disadvantage because they will have to buy a new command unit. Now they're also coming down the main road. The Israeli Merkava 2 and Zelda are moving forward and they're getting greeted by the Conquerors teams. Now they are only, let's say, base Conquerors teams, not Conquerors, um, Conquerors M which have increased accuracy and increased armor piercing, but they can still pose a bit of a threat to the vehicles that are moving in. Towards the middle, we also got the M84A and triple threat moving towards the, yep, the Israeli tanks, the Merkava 3B and the 3D Baz. At short range, I don't quite know who's going to win that. The 3D Baz looks like it's taken a bit of damage, potentially from an HGM that might have hit it in the side. And the three M84 ANs with a combined rate of fire of 27 rounds a minute, they'll just keep spewing lead towards the enemy and probably wipe them out very quickly. Senka team has been detected. One of the Merkava takes a shot at it, and then the Senka gets lost to line of sight again. And there we go, Merkava 3B pushing forward, damaging one of the M84 ANs, using its grenade launcher, but yeah, not enough. Shazkov is putting down a defense marker, saying, Guys, we need to do something about this. M84ANs have dealt a serious blow and are being smoked up so they can pull back. Now, Golf. What's happening here? We've got Panzerskite, backed up by their uh, transports, facing off against Formosa. That is not a very uh, good match for the Panzerskite. As that grenade launch of the Pallet M just chews through them. Now, this is when the SDR F-1940s are going to come in very, very handy. Unfortunately, it seems like Blue 4 might not yet have a good counter to the Twardy over there. Sure, they got an, an SDR V-103D, but the Twardy has wiped out both of the uh, 1940s, and with that, uh, well, actually they did the job, because the Panzerskita more or less survived, whereas the Formosa did not. But this Twardy... Well, actually, no, it's getting some serious damage from the SRV 103D. It must be just inside of the range of it. So the Twardy's been seriously damaged, but it's alive, which is more than Blue Force tanks can say. Sure enough, they got the 3D Baz over here, but it's damaged. But they lost their 3D. Um, let's see, where did the M84ANs go? This is the problem with the larger map. I'm only seeing one M84AN. I find it very hard to believe that I missed the destruction of two, but it is possible. Although I wouldn't quite know what angle they were using for that. Grem, where are your tanks, buddy? No, it's just the one. Maybe, maybe Bluefer was able to kill off both of those tanks. Well played to them. Now at this point, Red 4 is slightly ahead with 31 points versus 13. And uh, as opposed to what we have seen most of the time, the battle is not just raging in Golf Charlie, but there is also a fairly healthy amount of units being directed towards Echo. Red 4 has a scattering of units over here. Panzer Jekri, Erex Jekri, um, some transports, but Blue 4 has a lot more. Legion 90, Fab 2013s, um, there's the Leclerc. So they're definitely going to try and make a move into Echo. There is a T-72 M1 mod, but seriously damaged. And I really would not want to be in that tank if it takes on the Leclerc. Because Leclerc is going to chew that thing up. It is already... Already? Really? It's already being smoked up. And that should allow that tank to survive a little longer, especially with a logistics unit coming in for repairs. 
Now, what is going to be happening here? The Tuarty is still heavily damaged. The 103D is the only one that could take on the Tuarty. Of course, the Panzerskeet with the Carl, M2, um, Carl Gustav M2 could do it. But they would have to get really, really close. Red 4's line is, well, not very substantial, but neither is Blue 4. So I think we're at a bit of a standoff that nobody can really quickly break through. Push over here on the left from Blue 4. The Amex 10 RC and the Legion are pushing forward. It seems like they pushed back one of the Eryx teams. And that did come at the expense of half a group of Legionnaires. Amex 10, slightly damaged but still functional. Now the Legionnaires are pushing into, once again, Eryx and Pansity Yekiri. The VAP 2013 is probably not going to last long once these guys get into range, but that's not the only threat that they have. There's another VAP 2013 and the Leclerc. So it looks like Blue 4 is staking quite a bit on pushing the enemy out of Echo and potentially capturing the position later. Legionnaires have died, as have the VAP 2013, but the Pansity and the Eryx are not going to last long. Pansity Yekiri are down. Oh, here comes an 8H then. It's a Tow 2 8 uh, helicopter. Let's see, Leclerc, where's your enemy? There it is. Over here, Blue 4 has captured the, air, uh, the, the territory, Delta. If they can send a CV to Charlie, they can pretty easily start farming points. And the same can be said for Echo, because they have a pretty good hold of that situation. Red 4 seems to also get pushed over here. Panzerskite, Falskam Jägere. There is a scattering of forces which are pushing in, and the Twardy is unable to assist. That smokescreen is completely blocking out line of sight. At the same time, it looks like the uh, Spado have been detected by the Falskam Jägere, and the Amos is making its presence known by just dropping a couple of shells right on top of it. The STRV 103D is once again ready for the fight. The Twardy, again, not quite sure where to go, it seems. But, um, yep, there we go. It is made, yeah, it's moving. It's gonna move towards the Panzerskite, which have no problem whatsoever pushing this forest, as there's just two HGM teams and a truck holding that position. Good luck trying to dislodge that Twardy, though. Oh, what do we have going on here? Eric's in the back. Eric's in the back. The Mar 290 has been spotted. But do they have anything that can hit that? Oh yes, they do. They they got the Pivonia. So it looks like they're going to be taking out that Mar 290. And maybe they're sort of guesstimating the position of the CV. No, actually it's a blue four marker. This thing has a bit of side armor. Yep, there goes the Mar 290. Fortunately, for an artillery piece, it's fairly heavily armored. Three front, two side, two back. So it can sustain a couple of hits, although I really wouldn't want to test out the armor of that artillery unit. Ooh, speaking of, that got pretty close. Now, the Hussar and the Shayatet really need to be pushing out and scouting out how exactly Red 4 is spotting their line. Blue 4, in the meanwhile, has made it into the forest. Red 4 <coughs> actually is retreating. I thought that Blue 4 would easily wipe out these units, but apparently we're not fast enough. The Twardy is known, they know where it is, but again, they don't really have a way to kill it. The STV 103D still has plenty of ammunition, but not really a lot of fuel. So it might need some supplies, although it's not going to go anywhere in a hurry, since it is detracked. In the middle, still one M84AN around. Durban LR and Rovait are holding position. Seems like this is a bit of a stalemate. Which is not ideal for Red 4, because they have invested a lot of forces in here. And they're all stuck. They cannot go left, they cannot go right, they cannot go forward, so the only real way that they have is back. But that means, more or less, giving up more territory to Blue 4. Blue 4 still moving forward. Twardy not quite getting a good look at the infantry. Oh, there we go. They did spot them. But not long enough. You saw the Twardy aim, and then completely lose the track. Back to the left, where the Legionnaire seems to have to... Yeah, I think it's the VLRA Logistic. They got some uh, resupplies, some reinforcements, and now they're going to be pushing out the Eryx. 
Unfortunately, the Arax get support from the Mortar, which is bad news for the Legionnaires. But then again, the Legionnaires get support from the MX-10. Except that the Arax took it out. Now, there is a supply truck up for grabs, which can immediately resupply the Legionnaires. And it looks like we got Lisbon already pushing in more infantry to make sure that the Legionnaires cannot prove to be a big threat on this flank. The Eriks have not yet been detected. They did fire one shot from the Apalas and one from the Igla. The Hilo is flying around. I'm not seeing the Mar 290 anymore. So it looks like it was successfully killed off by the artillery. And... Yep. Grem is saying that's where the CV is. And he's not wrong. The Shayatet have finally found the intruders. The Eriks have been detected. There's now a big firefight between the Shayatet, which are firing at them with the AKM and the PKM, versus just the Jetomatic from the Eriks. Both are elite forces. These guys just don't have enough firepower, and they're now being stunned and suppressed, as opposed to the Shayatet, which are definitely losing guys, but it seems like the Eriks might be on the losing end of this fight. Now, red is at a plus one because Bluefor was moving the CV. There we go. Intruders are down. Now, what's happening down towards the middle? Reinforcements are still coming in. Yep, it's standard Yekari. Shouldn't be that much of a bother for the Legionnaires. And the XA-180 is not going to be that much of a fire support unit for it. Leclerc is once again moving forward, but this time in the, in the field. I think the Eriks would be spotting that vehicle. So they know where it is. Servals are... What are you going to do? Oh, you're going to hit that place. I thought you were going to smoke up the Leclerc. Nope. They're hitting the position over here. Wiping out some of the transports. And unfortunately for the Mehanitsovana, they're pretty close. So they might accidentally eat some of the shells from those mortars. Red 4 is now pushing Blue Force Kustjegde and uh, Foskermjegde, and there were Panzerskite inside this force. They're pushing them back out. Red 4 is reclaiming the territory, and Blue Force line is looking pretty weak. 103D, LVKV 90, and here Panzerskite on the withdrawal, and that's it. They're all being supported by one mortar, but an Amos, while it is a fantastic artillery piece, eats some ammunition. It just chews through supplies very, very quickly. So that Rio, 800 points of logistics, already empty. Now, this game can very much go either way. Red 4 has a small lead of 41 versus 13. But I don't really see where Red 4 could easily position the CV, whereas Blue 4 could put a CV into Charlie and start putting pressure on Red 4. And the same is still true for Echo. Blue 4 is maneuvering. Leclerc is pushing forward, <coughs> or has been pushed forward, and could now start to pose quite the threat towards the units which are back here. There's really only a T-72M1 mod which is a threat, and then it's an anti-air gun and two mortars. Of course, the Hilo is still here. The TO-2 Hilo could be a serious problem for the Leclerc if it pushes forward. Now it's time for the Legionnaires to move in, and the Legionnaires are getting back up from the Leclerc. To make sure that the HH-10 is not going to be pushing back, they parked a Celtic overhead, which will shoot down the HH-10 if it decides to intervene. But the Celtic cannot really get too close with the threat of the I-296 over there. So far the Legionnaires have taken some damage, but they have wiped out the Yekri and their transport. And there are a few more units coming in from the Scott 2A with infantry and Scott 2 with, I think, engineers. Now look at Blue 4. If Red 4 decides to push over here, they can probably waltz right over these units. The Twardy is back to full health. They got a reconnaissance tank. They have a Sopal there for anti-air duty, Commandosi and Zweadauchi. So they can spot, they can kill enemy infantry, and they can pretty easily crush the 103D. Because that's all that Blue 4 has. They even got a Zweadauchi over on the flank. Not exactly sure where they want to be moving this, but it could be going all the way around. Red is also moving towards the middle. 
they have pushed in a T-55 AK command tank, and by doing so, neglected, or sorry, countered Blue Force hold on Delta, so they're at a plus one. Blue Force really does not have a lot of units. Some transports, the Merc of a 3D Baz, which has been fully repaired, and the command infantry, which seemingly has already taken some artillery damage. So these guys are going to be, well, hard-pressed to hold on to this line. Maglan, possibly in a, an ideal position to fire ATGMs at units as they come out of the tree line, although this tree line is probably too dense. They unfortunately cannot help because they have no more missiles. Command and Marine are down to one operator, and they're only allowed to fire anti-tank weapons. And that is when the Mayhem and Sovena come out. Now, where's the Leclerc? Leclerc is still here. Oh, we got Spado. Very deadly infantry against tanks. 24 AP, good rate of fire, and accurate. So let's have the Legionnaires take their full attention. And then the Leclerc can push in. And hopefully neutralize these guys as quickly as possible. There we are. They're stunned. Crotal has also been moved forward. I like this offensive by Blue Four here. Normally it's just Delta and Charlie, but this time around they went to the left of Echo, as seen from this side, of course. Now, the Merc of a 3D Baz is on the move. It's falling back. There's one Bardalis trying to, well, I guess, cower in the woods, because it cannot do much of anything outside of that. Proletari have pushed the woods. Mehensovana have pushed out the Commando Marines. And the Command Infantry is dead, putting Red 4 at a plus 2. Blue 4 has about 12 minutes to do something about that. And it looks like they're staking their claim on Foxtrot. Leclerc is moving forward, still with 17 rounds of main ammunition. Uh, we still got the Celtic and a reconnaissance helo. Again, that I-296 could be a real threat, so let's hope that it's going to be neutralized quickly for Blue 4's sake. Otherwise, both of these helos could be toast pretty quick, although it only carries two more missiles. Now, Blue, what are you going to do? You got Zwia Douchi coming in from behind the mortar. The Amos does have a direct fire mode, but not with HE. All it will do is armor piercing. So the Zwia Douchi can probably just roll over, or just run up to the Amos and take it out. There is a health marker over here. Yeah, Blue Force is looking very, very fragile over here. Looks like both sides have largely uh, expanded their forces or expanded their points. It seems like they don't have a lot left. So we had doubt she fired one RPG. They know where the Amos is. And maybe that's enough for the Pivonia to take it out. No, it's not aiming in that direction. It might be trying to go for the Rovait. Blue 4 is now sort of spawn camping this side. Anything that comes in is going to get shot down. Leclerc is ready. Legionnaires are standing by with their Eriks. And the cannon over here is spotting anything that does spawn in. They probably know about it. Get infantry in the transport and move to front. Yeah, at this point they're bringing in everything that they still have left. Which sort of confirms my suspicion that they don't have a lot of points left. Panzerskite, pushing forward, or rather, getting pushed back by the Commandosi. Tuardi is looking for blood, but can't quite seem to get line of sight. So Iadauchi moving in from the, from, the, from the flank here. False Kamiegator also trying to get some sort of cover to break line of sight. And here comes the Tuardi. What are you going to do, buddy? Tuardi is not yet opening up. Shyskov seems to be urging the Merkava to push in. And probably that has to do something with the Mehenet Chovena. Now the Panzerskita are all alone in here. They do have some support from 103D, but it's damaged. And it only has six rounds of ammunition left. 
Blue Four has moved up with the Leclerc and the Legionnaire. Uh, it looks like they don't really have a lot to stop the Mehenitsov and his offense in the Bravo. Put Chai Tet in the building. Yeah, against 20 of these guys with support. Good luck. Where's the M84AN? Oh, it's still here. See, Red doesn't really have to move. Red 4 can just sort of hold out and make sure that they last long enough to just maintain that plus 2 and start farming points. So it's Blue Force move. Leclerc could still take out the T72 M1 mod. Uh, this is a very evenly fought, matched fight. 21, 21, frontal armor, uh, AP 22, 23. 12 rounds a minute though on the Leclerc. And just 9 on the T72 M1 mod. Now here come the Mehanitsova now. The Shayatet have finally arrived. Merkva 2A is going to be here in the nick of time with the main gun, the Browning, and the grenade launcher. The Shayatet's opening up at the PKM. And here comes the Merkava 2A, just in time to shoot all the Mehanichova before they manage to get cover inside of a building. But only just. That was awfully close. Unit down. Legionnaires are pushing forward, immediately getting cut in half by the T-72M1 mod. They fire a missile from the Eryx, but they miss. The anti-air piece is down, but so is the Legionnaires. And now the Leclerc and the T-72M1 mod can still not quite see each other. HH-10 trying to get hit by the uh, Crotal. Crotal wasting its missiles on the L-12 and, well, hitting one but missing the second. It's now out of ammo. No, it's not quite out of ammo. It still has one left and there's a logistics truck close. LT M60 p is still pushing in, but that should not be a problem for the Merkava. They're really going to have to risk it now with the Leclerc. Missile coming in. That's a tow 2. Doing some damage against the Leclerc. Nothing too serious. That side does not seem to be having too much of an action going on. T72 M1 mod now engaging the Maglan. Which are getting spotted by the Eryx. Commander Marine also moving up. Maglans, no, 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 don't push out. Leclerc, hoping to assist the Maglan, but again, too late. Eric's taking out the Celtic. Yeah, Blue Force losing a lot of units now. I think they've grown a bit desperate. Which is a situation that could have been prevented, I'd say. Because they could have just put a CV into Charlie. But then again... I'm not playing, I don't have to do as much thinking, I just have to talk about what I'm seeing. It's just a bunch of support units over here from blue. It is interesting to see how that Scania is just maneuvering through everything, and not yet getting captured. I don't see blue coming back from this, unless they have some sort of ace up their sleeve. I'm 84 AN rushing in for the kill. That's one servo down, two servos down. Commander Marine could be greeting the M84EN, but it only really needs one shot. I think that was a hit from the Commander Marines, but not good enough. Leclerc joins and kills the M84EN. But now it's down to half health, and T72M1 mod is not. Leclerc is falling back. But it really doesn't have too many places to hide unless it wants to dip down below the tree line or the, the terrain line. Bravo 8 engaging command Dosi? Nah. I think it was firing at a, a Rio. The two captured Rios. Bravo 8 with her FN mag. This time getting some support from the Merc of a 3D Baz, which has survived so far. And I think now it's Red 4 that doesn't really have a good way to counter the Merc of a 3D Baz. Although they do have the Conquerors here and the drug team over there. They might just have enough firepower. Amos, still with some shells left, is now working over... Well, trying to work over the Commandosi, but the Commandosi are already on the run. The Leclerc is... What the hell? 
the Leclerc is sort of hunting down the T72 M1 mod and it's running. Curious. Still, we only have three minutes left and Red Force at 349, correction, 351 points. Good luck, Blue. I think this is it. So the highway to sole choice or their tactics or maybe the superior tactics from Red didn't quite work out for Regiment Hosinger's choice of map. Oh no! Pfft. Ow. That was the Leclerc. Flank shot by the T72 M1 mod. Leclerc is no more. The Crotal more or less has been detected. It's getting shelled, but seemingly not quite getting hit. Don't quite know how that works. There goes Yuda, he surrenders. And Shyskop surrenders. It is pretty much done for Blue 4. Red 4 again doesn't really need to push, they just have the points and they can just wait out the time. And unfortunately that is the end of Regiment Husinger. These guys have fought a very good fight, they came very far in the tournament and I enjoyed seeing their, their various tactics with Blue 4 and Red 4. So, um, salutations to Regiment Hosinger and congratulations to the Green Brigade. Now, the Green Brigade are not quite done. The Green Brigade is now going to have to face Razman's team in the fifth loser round. So, we can definitely see the Green Brigade again and the fight that they have ahead of them is not one that I am enviable, uh, envious of as it's probably going to be a rough one. Now, more of that to come up in future videos, so don't forget to subscribe and you'll be automatically notified of new tournament matches. Thank you guys for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll catch you guys soon for another one.